Hi, my name is Alan Andreas, and welcome to Alan Innovation. Today, we're in the Alan Innovation Lab, and I'd like to talk to you about a topic that I wish I would have had a lot sooner in my career, but I ended up learning things a bit the hard way, and so I want to kind of share some things with you as it relates to this topic. And we're talking about ServiceNow custom tables. But before we get into what is a custom table, let's level set and make this video as accessible as possible to everyone else. And let's go over what an actual table is. So first, what is a table in ServiceNow? A table in ServiceNow is a collection of records in the database and each record corresponds to a row and each field corresponds to a column. And so that may still be like, that's a little confusing. So let's step through that a little bit more. So for example, this is a screenshot of a list of incident records in a ServiceNow environment. This is going to be where on the left-hand side, you're gonna have your records, incident, you know, 1005, 10001, et cetera. You have your other items on here in the columns. These are going to be your fields. So when it was opened, the short description, the caller, the priority, all of those things are fields. So these records and fields really all live in harmony on a table within ServiceNow. That's where all the records live at. So what does this have to do with anything else? Why am I even making this video for, for others to kind of soak in and learn from? Is I made a mistake. So a quick story time here. I um, had a situation when I first started out where I was working in a ServiceNow environment. I thought I knew a lot about the platform, but in the early days and really even today, a lot of people still are not aware uh, of the billing or licensing implications that are on the platform. The reason for that is that ServiceNow allows you in sub-production environments to really create tables, activate plugins, turn features on, and none of it's charged none of it's billed to you and you don't really know the full impact of everything until these things make it up to production and so for me when i was working at an organization we wanted to have an hr kind of a concept where we had onboarding of uh, i was at, at, at a medical facility and so we wanted to have onboarding of doctors coming in gathering their certifications and and all of those maintenance point type things that they had to do their continuing education credits all of that brought in as part of onboarding. And so we chose not to buy ServiceNow's HR offering way back then, this was like 10 years ago, because it wasn't fully fleshed out. It wasn't really a full holistic offering for HR back then. It was very light in nature. And so I was like, well, I don't need, we don't need to buy this. I can just build it on the platform myself. And so I ended up creating a table for HR and started working on a catalog item and doing all this stuff to kind of build out this proof of concept that I wanted to show to my boss, who was the chief technology officer. So I reported right to the CTO. And I was really excited about showing, uh, and I did show them this thing I came up with and they were like, oh, this is fantastic. This is great. And so what ended up happening was that after I um, got done with most of that in the development environment, I ended up actually putting in my two weeks notice uh, at that company. And so during the interview process at the next company or one of the future companies I was, I was looking at or considering going, uh, I was talking about they said, hey, do you have um, experience with building tables? And do you know all of that? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I know how to build tables. I just worked on this HR thing. And they were talking about, oh, okay, so you know about runtime licensing. And so today it's called App Engine Licensing. Back then it was called Runtime Licensing. And I remember um, kind of going, what? And he was like, yeah, you know, when you build a custom table, it, it, it consumes a runtime license to do that. And so for me, I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And like played it off like I knew what he was talking about, but I, I really had no idea. And so after coming back after that interview and doing some Googling, talking to ServiceNow or account rep specifically and kind of looking at things on the platform, I was like, oh crap, like you can't just go in and start creating custom tables and things uh, willy nilly because it, it doesn't need, there is a charge that could be there for that. And so I ended up having to go back to the CTO in my final two weeks and I was like, yeah, you know that HR thing that I came up with? 
mm, we're probably not going to be able to use that or you might want to talk to ServiceNow about how to go about doing that with this runtime licensing and all that because I was just working on it, but it's not fully fleshed out. Don't move it up to production yet. And so for me, it was a bit embarrassing because that was um, something I didn't know about. And you, I don't think you really learn that in the ServiceNow admin course. I don't think you really learn that in the platform. So that's what led me to kind of want to create this video. And so why should you care about this? Obviously from my story here, that should have kind of alluded to some of this, but really it's because just because you can create custom tables easily in the platform, it, it really doesn't mean that you should. And so kind of moving back to the presentation here, why should you care? You know, ServiceNow will conduct audits and can bill you for excess tables. So just because you can create those tables doesn't mean that you should. And so now we're kind of getting into, well, what is a custom table? So a custom table in the platform means any non-ServiceNow provided table that's been created or installed by on or behalf of the customer on the platform and used for any purpose, including in the creation of a custom app, uh, that's a custom table unless it's been exempt. So there are tables that are exempt or you can create tables and they can become exempt and meaning they don't count uh, as a quote unquote custom table. So let's kind of talk through that. So what is an exempt table? An exempt table is any of these tables that you see here, you're allowed to extend these tables, meaning you create a new table and then in the field where it says extends, you would choose one of these tables. And so any one of these specific tables can be extended up to 1,000 times as we see in the highlight here. So anytime you do this more than 1,000 times or you create a custom table or a table that's not extended from one of these, then it does count as a custom table. And so how do you know what you're entitled to if you're allowed to even create custom tables? How do you know what you're actually entitled to. And so one of those is through knowing what package your organization or your client has purchased. And so in this example here, we have IT service management and the standard professional and enterprise tier packages of ITSM actually include what we're now calling app engine custom tables. And so you'll see for the standard package, you have 25 and for what most people are buying today, ITSM Pro, you get actually 50 custom tables. But here's the thing, the story doesn't end here. There's actually maybe another step that you wanna actually look at before you can make that determination on creating a custom table if you're allowed to do that or not. And so that's really taking a look at your purchase order. And so right here I have a screenshot that is from a very real purchase order if you have access to one of those today or you can ask your client for their purchase order, you can get this purchase order, scroll down to the bottom and in the kind of the terms and conditions section, you'll see the package that was purchased here. And so in this case, as shown earlier, this is an ITSM Pro screenshot of a purchase order. And you'll notice here where it says App Engine Starter 50. And it says customers granted the right to create or install up to 50 custom tables. So that kind of aligns to the screenshot I showed a moment ago on what package tier, but really the purchase order is the law here. This is the record of truth. This is really what you would wanna go off of to make sure and double check if you're allowed to create those custom tables or not. And then if you have any questions at all, you definitely should speak to the client's ServiceNow account executive to know first and foremost how many actual tables uh, they have um, permission to, to work with. And so are there anything else about custom tables that you really should know? And one of those is this concept of grandfathered tables. So you may not be familiar with this. A lot of us may not be you know, used to this, but there's a concept of grandfather table, uh, tables. And so what this really means from a high level is let's say you've had 25 custom tables on that client, that environment before. So their contract, they were allowed to have App Engine 25 tables, and then they associate tables to that custom application. And then later, a couple years later, they renew their contract and they renew, they gain CSM Pro, HRSD Pro, whatever that may be, and they get 
more tables and more tables associated with those applications. And so what will happen is, is that if you move away from that original subscription that you had, you're still allowed to have those custom tables. You don't have to just go, oh, if we don't renew ITSM and have our pro uh, offering in those 50 tables, what happens? You're still grandfathered in to those tables. And so here at this bottom screenshot, it kind of shows what would happen. So you have your 25 tables that's associated to a grandfather subscription. And then you have your new subscription one, two, and three with 25, 25, and five as just an example of, of another uh, set of suite of tools where you get more custom or custom tables and you can associate those with that. The other piece is that you really wanna make sure that um, when you create a custom table, that you're aware of the required fields that all tables need to have. And so this list here is all of the tables, or all of the fields rather, that are gonna be on your custom table when you create it. So a lot of people go, they create a new table, they see all these fields and they're like, whoa, 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 I didn't create these, these fields here. Well, these are all required to be on every single table. So you're gonna see the created on, the created by, the updated by all of those fields are going to be there so that's high level on custom tables what you need to really be aware of and so as your key takeaways here what can you do to prevent surprise charges from service now because again we talked about they audit they can check over your instance on their annual audits that they do so the really the main things are review your entitlements first and foremost double check your purchase order and or speak to your account executive or the client's account executive to really be aware fully of what custom tables you're allowed to have on that instance. The second thing is to associate all of these custom tables to a subscription within subscription management. So subscription management is an application in the platform that's in your production instance. And this would be where you go in and you see your subscriptions there like ITSM Pro, your custom tables for that. You see CSM Pro, HRSD Pro, et cetera, those custom table line items there. And any custom table that you're creating, you need to associate with the proper subscription in subscription management for the for service now to know that where this table belongs to for your own peace of mind and it's really so that you can monitor your compliance right so if you do this properly you can then monitor it and go okay we've used 20 of 25 we've got five left and this allows you to manage your allocations properly when a new demand pops up to create something else on the platform this really allows you to be able to um, create applications or create tables in a very proper governed structured manner because you know what you're allocated for you know how many you have available so that way you're not being surprised or your client is not being surprised later down the line so this is architecture 101 system admin 101 so these are things that i would recommend that you keep in your back pocket refer to this video in the future as you come across the need to create custom tables so if you enjoy ServiceNow content like this, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with others. And on the next time uh, around, we'll, we'll see you then. So thank you again for tuning in. Once again, my name is Alan Andreas with Alan Ovation. Take care.